this is another video in my listening list series. Basically the whole purpose is to just show people new music that they might not have heard before that I've been listening to lately. And I think it's really cool and I just want to share with the people. So we're going with a short intro here today. I apologize in advance for the mass amount of noise in the background. It's like 15 dudes yelling and screaming and using chainsaws. So it's a lovely sound. The first album we want to talk about is by Shuggy Otis. It's called Inspiration Information. We had a rainy day. I'm in a He's a very interesting figure. He's one of those musicians that are very seclusive and they do everything themselves, almost everything. Like he doesn't play the string instruments or horns or anything, but synths, guitar, bass, vocals, he does it all. He's he's someone who's inspired a lot of your favorite musicians like i know he's inspired prince or d'angelo and I, I don't know what it is but it seems like the more ethnically ambiguous you look the more amazing your music is i mean th this this guy prince those are the only two examples but it's crazy that it's happened twice you know what i mean anyways the first track is called inspiration information and that's what really grabbed me into the album because the sound of the drums is just so, it's got that right amount of crunch, that lo-fi crunch. They, it just really, it really hits you in the chest. I, I don't, I'm just a sucker for drums that sound like that. A decent chunk of the album is instrumental as well. He uses drum machines a lot. There's Rainy Day, which is, a, it's, it's good. It's a slower one. XI-30, it's kind of silly sounding, like it sounds very bubbly and um it, it, it reminds me of bemo from adventure time that's what it sounds like there's playing which is a lot more subdued i usually skip it just because it's a little it's kind of ambient and boring to me but if you're into that t type of ambient music it, it's a good track um there's not available that's an instrumental one i really feel like it should have vocals but it's it's really good on its own great guitar playing great bass playing too Another song that really grabbed me from it is one of the last tracks, Things We Like To Do. He has this vocal arrangement that's very crunchy and jazzy, and it's like, I feel like my ears shouldn't like it, but it sounds really cool. Fun fact, he actually wrote the song Strawberry Letter 23 that uh was made popular by the brothers johnson so he he wrote a lot of music for other people also like prince and also it's kind of funny reading his backstory he grew up in a family of musicians who gigged a lot and he was typically the guitar player in his father's band when he was a kid like under 21 obviously you're not allowed in bars if you're under 21 so to get into these gigs to play he would put on a fake mustache and sunglasses they would let him into the bar it's kind of fun. it's very like cartoonish the next example is sly and the family stone there's a riot going on <laughs> It originally had a different title, but then Marvin Gaye dropped What's Going On, which is a very political soul album. And so in response, they titled it There's a Riot Going On. And this is another example of one person kind of being a control freak. Sly Stone, the bass player and vocalist, was going through this period of drug abuse, basically, and, you know, surrounding himself with the wrong people. So he, again, was a bird just flew into my window. So he had this period of seclusion where he was pushing all of his band members away and taking control of a lot of the album. He's one of the first major artists to use drum machines, and it was because, you know, he was going through a hard time mentally. <coughs> He did have a lot of people come in and play on it, but most of them aren't members in the band. Also, you'll notice with the record that his vocals sound very low quality, as in like fidelity, like they're lo-fi. And it's because he was actually recording them with like a wireless microphone that you, you typically use those for live situations, not for like studio recordings, but he didn't care. There's stories of him like laying on his back and, and singing and stuff. And you can really tell it weighs his voice down a bit adds to that moody nature of the album another thing i really like is again the drum recording it's a pretty simple drum recording there's a a video that reverb put out of their series of like recreating famous drum tones and stuff they probably use less than four mics they probably used like two but it sounds great it again it's got that crunch 
The tracks I really like are Family Affair. It's kind of, it's upbeat, but it's, it's, it's bittersweet as well. Spaced Cowboy, I really like. It kind of feels like an acid trip just because he's like yodeling and there's like a harmonica solo. But then the drum machine is playing like a Latin beat. It's so weird, but it's it's so good too. You Caught Me Smiling. Again, there's such a, a strange dreamlike quality to this album. Just Like a Baby really reminds me of Baby Boy by Childish Gambino. It's got that harpsichord type sound, like electric harpsichord. Thank You For Talking To Me Africa is also really good. It's very extended and the bass is just playing the same thing. I want to thank you for letting me be myself again. But it grooves. It grooves so hard. That bass is thumping and a grooving. But yeah, I've noticed a theme in what I've been listening to a lot lately, and that's a single person kind of being a control freak and doing everything according to their own creative vision and ignoring everything else. D'Angelo, Shuggy Otis, Sly and the Family Stone, Tame Impala. Well, I don't know it at first when I listened to it, but projects that have that singular vision, they always have a very distinctive sound. And I think that's why I gravitate towards them because subconsciously I'm like, I relate to it. And then I look into it, I'm like, oh yeah, they were a control freak by themselves because uh, that's how I do all my music. Anyways, the next band I wanted to talk about is Kikugaku Moyo. It's Japanese. The album is Masana Temples. And I found this band because I was looking for other things that sound like Tame Impala because I've been listening to Kevin Parker nonstop and I just, I was looking for something new but in a similar vein. They don't sound exactly the same. They sound quite different, but it's definitely got that like neo psychedelic type sound. It's mostly instrumental. There are some vocals, but they go from like hard rock to like baby folk, like the song Orange Peel. Amaya Dori, Blanket Song. It's, uh, again, it kind of reminds me of Bimo from Adventure Time because it's just like, it sounds cute, but it's still interesting to listen to. Um, but then they, they got this like hard rock stuff like Dripping Sun, the second track is almost eight minutes long and it's like nonstop heart beaten. Whatever rhymes with heart beaten that isn't inappropriate to put out to the public that's that's what it is the the first track is is very um fanfare-esque but in an indian way they have a like dedicated sitarist by the way and they run the sitar through effects pedals and stuff they actually again reverb has a video with this sitarist and he talks about how he you know approaches the instrument it's really cool <laughs> The, the first track is called Entrance, and it's very, it, it's got that Raga type vibe, like drones and the sitars. If you don't speak Japanese, you won't know what they're saying at all, but uh, it doesn't matter because it kicks ass. Also, the, the album cover is really, really good. I, I've, I've skimmed through some of their other records, and they're, they're pretty good, so definitely check out Kikagaku Moyo. Uh, I just discovered this band. They just put out an EP. The band is called Glass Beams. The EP is called Mirage. I see a lot of people online are like hating on them. Like, oh, they're uh, Krungbin ripoffs. They sound exactly like Krungbin. They don't sound like Krungbin at all. They're just instrumental and they have exotic rock type sounds. They also have like a specific aesthetic, which Krungbin also has, but they don't look similar at all also they're from australia so they're like from the other side of the planet but i mean they clearly they both have these influences from foreign musical cultures and you know people who don't know any better are just like oh they're exactly the same it's not like greta van fleet and led zeppelin they, they have two very distinct sounds and they wear these masks that looks like a doily made out of beads and stuff it's kind of it's it's very strange the whole vibe they got going on it's kind of like the the uh rich guys in squid games that like bet on who's gonna win it that's kind of the vibe they give off the guitarist plays the synths i believe uh bassist and a drummer they actually put out them playing the music live 
it's very highly produced and it uh, it sounds really good too then they're like slightly different solos and stuff slowly i've been acclimating my ears to synths more if you're like me and you like i only like hearing real instruments that's what i like they're, they're good jumping off point i think they run a guitar through a synth as well because they got like weird like envelope filters going on great drum recording they're very dry and punchy and they use the uh metal chime things that you like brush across with your stick and it like something like a wind chime it's such a small thing really adds to the vibe they're putting out they're clearly going for like desert rock type sound i think the next time i make a video like this i'm going to be talking about more bands that really get into this like vintage synth type sounds anyways if you like the video well first like subscribe and you know check out the music i'm suggesting here oh also like 90% of the people who watched my last video weren't subscribed and also didn't like it even though they clearly watched like at least till halfway through the video. If you're going to watch that far in the video, you better fucking like and subscribe, bitch. Okay, bye.